Hi, it's Luna and welcome to day 7 of Moth Eaten Reels 31 Days of Horror 2024. Today we'll be exploring the 1800s fantasy Hindi language world of Bulbul 2020. Let's chat about it. Disclaimer, I'm sorry if I seem somewhat agitated. I've actually just recorded all of this already, but apparently I didn't because my recording decided to then glitch out and not actually capture any of it. But never mind that, we're moving forward. So my expectations going into this movie were that it would be a fantasy, you know, historical design, supernatural murders case. And I wasn't exactly wrong, all of these things do happen. How do they happen though? Well, let me tell you. So we open in on the scene of two children, a boy and a girl, and the girl is dressed up in some kind of like bridal looking gear. I'm not exactly sure because another thing that I'll be saying throughout this video is that I don't have a lot of cultural context because you know what? A crash course on Wikipedia can only really give you so much. But we start with this little boy and little girl and then we find out that it is because the little girl is being married off to the little boy's brother. The brother is then about 30 whilst this child is around 10. So there's our first horror. As they're in the carriage ride on their way to her new home, um, the little boy starts telling her this tale about this, this beast woman, this demoness called a choro. And it's something that I am gonna say that I'm glad that I did look up whilst I was actually watching the film the first time, because as much as I just said, you know, a crash course on Wikipedia is not gonna teach you everything about a culture. The thing is, I think that it is actually very important to know the context of the name Chuddle specifically, because the way that the subtitles translated it as just demon woman, it didn't get across a lot. Even as the boy is then, you know, going into the folklore of this particular type of demon. When looking up the law specifically for a Chuddle, I found out some things that the boy said, you know, backwards facing feet, lives in the trees, but also that they are specifically agents of the deity Kali. Um, that they, they often come back to avenge wronged women, perhaps including themselves, and this is something important to keep in mind for the film going forward. After we first have a little scene of them arriving, we get a flash forward for 20 years later when um, the little boy is all grown up now, his name is Satya, and he is returning from London to the estate where he and his brothers live with their wives. And we find that one of the wives, who was riding with them in the carriage, Binadini, um, her head is shaved and she is then all in white, white veil, white um, dress, and the uh, Bulbul, the little girl, who is not little anymore, like Satya, uh, is running the entire household on her own. He disapproves of this, but she just has this mysterious little smile and he just has to deal with it. Another character introduced during this is Dr. Sundip, who uh, visits frequently to make sure that Bulbul's feet are all right after an undisclosed accident. We find out at this point that um, his brother Mahendra has been killed and that everyone is saying that it was a Chodol who did it. Shortly after, another man is murdered and at this point, Satya suspects Dr. Sundip. Flash back to several years ago and Binodini, who is actually sleeping with Indranil, who is actually Bulbul's husband, um, she then plants it in Indranil's mind that Bulbul and Satya have feelings for one another. They frequently hang out together and they write stories together as their bond. Um, and so that is the moment where Indranil sends Satya away to London. There's a pretty beautifully shot scene um, of then Bulbul being quite torn up about this because writing stories has often then been, you know, an escape for women, especially women in like closed off marriages and isolated from a lot of people. She and Binadini don't not get on, but they're clearly not, you know, super fond of each other. They are not then an escape for each other from their circumstances. Anyway, she runs to the window, which is then presented as bars, and then it's like all of the phantoms of every time she ran to the window whenever she heard that visitors were arriving um, or run into her. She eventually realizes that he is not coming back anytime soon and she takes the book that they wrote together of their stories and heartbroken, tears it all out 
and throws it in the fireplace. With some more prompting from Binadini, Indranil goes and investigates this fireplace and just so happens to find a convenient piece of unburned paper that says Satya and Bulbul. And so this to him confirms that they did have feelings for each other and that is not acceptable from his wife. And so as she is bathing, he um, grabs her by the hair, drags her out, and in a very slow-mo kind of drama scene that I wasn't keen on for making the brutality aesthetic, um, he beats her and mutilates her feet. We then see that she is bedridden, that she is recovering, and this is when Dr. Sundip first enters her life. And then while she is bedridden, the brother Mahendra um, rapes and accidentally suffocates her during the act. The following scene we see that Bulbul is not dead, but has been resurrected, possessed maybe, made into an agent of the goddess Kali as she has come back and it is Bulbul who is the Churro. After this we return to the present day to see that Satya is um, escorting Sundip away and shenanigans ensue in which the entire forest is set ablaze by Satya. The now revealed Churro, um, Bulbul, is then lit a light in the trees as she is running away. So she goes up in flames with all of the forest and Satya cries. Then we have another time skip to one year later where Indrana returns to the estate, finds it completely empty, um, and then that night as he goes to sleep, who should return waking up from ash and dust but Bulbul, who smiles at him wickedly before the credits roll, the smile indicating that he's gonna be the next one on her kill list. Now let's run through why this film was actually really disappointing to me. So a lot of the words that were popping up around um, my general searches was feminist, feminist, feminist. And I suppose that is because of this kind of like revisionist telling of the law of a churro. Um, it sort of reminded me of some revisionist uh, tellings of the Medusa tale. Um, it's something that I've then, you know, <laughs> seen on Tumblr. It's that, um, of course, Medusa is then one of the Gorgons. She has two other sisters, is um, a common one. But the idea that essentially um, Medusa was once a human who was raped by Poseidon and Athena's judgment in turning her into a Gorgon was actually um, a benevolent thing, turning her into this creature who would petrify anyone that looked at her. And the empowerment in that idea for someone who has been a victim of violent sexual assault. And it's something that came to mind for me watching this film because I feel that it has a similar level of dissatisfaction for me. The idea that it's kind of not actually that cathartic to then find that the only way to then succeed, win at assault, is to then become some kind of monster who is just so different from who you were before. And it's a sticky topic, it's an upsetting one. And so this entire video, like, is one that is a little bit difficult for me to talk about and I kind of regret that I'm in a bit of a state from the last recording dying that this is all being given to you in speedrun mode. Um, because of obviously the sensitivity of the topic. But early scenes of Bulbul and Satya, especially when they were children, uh, we see that she is then playful, mischievous. As I said, one of the main ways that they bonded was through telling stories and, and making up these like fantasies together. And so she has these elements, like she has a character that the actor plays so, so well. I'm gonna tell you now that the actor's acting actually puts this all up a whole star rating for me. It was just so well done. She has just wonderful expressive eyes that really then drove home how much her character just died after the assault. There's praise to be had as well for the visual metaphor of the feet. Um, when she was young she used to go around barefoot all the time and then it reminded me of like Disney Rapunzel, you know, that innocence, that playfulness, that like completely open and warm response to the world to feel grass beneath your feet and such. Um, and then as time goes on we see that actually a lot of the men in her life are then um, using that kind of metaphor by um, putting her in lots of like foot jewellery that then kind of almost resemble shackles. Like the shackles of society. And one of the scenes, uh, when she's bedridden, when she's first being propped up to be, you know, 
in the recovery position, um, there's a pretty nice visual scene for like gore, but also in that cruel horror scene way, uh, in which, uh, as I say, her feet have been mutilated, and so the doctors are pulling off all of her bloodied foot jewelry and putting them into a dish. And of course, the other focus on feet is then surrounding the uh, chuddal folklore, is that they have backwards facing feet. This mutilation of her feet is something that the Doctor then is an ally to, I suppose? Or he's in on it early on because obviously he is then the only Doctor in the village and he's overseeing her recovery and see he sees this quite like repulsive scene where her feet swivel round to go backwards uh, when he's trying to be a Doctor and say, keep, keep them straight, keep them upright and they're just swiveling round. So there's praise to be had for that, I think, but I really then just don't like that whole framing, as I say. One of the other examples of this kind of trope in media um, is then Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones. I've always been a Sansa lover, um, that's another video, but I'm bringing it up because the thing is, we first meet her as just, you know, a happy little girl, full of fantasies, full of life, full of vim and vigour, and then I think it's series six, doesn't matter, but when she is then a victim of a violent assault, her character then also seems to change entirely because she needs to be strong woman now. And so she sets her rapist's own dogs on him and just becomes brutal and cutthroat, only wears black, is only cold and calculating and is not that stupid little girl anymore. Similarly for Bulbul, she does not seem to actually have joy in life, she has revenge, that's what she has, that's what she is completely consumed by, and being consumed by revenge is not a goal. Acknowledging again that this is a sticky topic, that it's going to hit a lot of different people in a lot of different ways, a lot of victims of sexual assault will feel differently about this, but I'm saying that for me, it's a disappointment every time that I see that actually the painting of the way to survive, a revenge fantasy, is then to become just someone that you're not because it will take over the rest of your life and you will never escape it, is how it always hits to me. And so that was one of my major issues with Bulbul. Um, another thing that I found then just really unsavoury, left a really bad taste in my mouth, the fact that then she is this agent of Kali, this goddess who has various aspects. From a quick little search of her name, she has aspects like the moon, femininity, destruction, revenge. And so all of these things, once you know them, they kind of set you up for what's about to happen. One of the deaths that happens, one of the killed men, there's a witness, a little girl, and she says he was killed by the goddess, says the subs. Specifically though, it's nice when you actually use your rear balls because I'm like, Kali, she said Kali. The way that I summed up the summary, um, all of those flashbacks, they really obfuscate what is otherwise just a very simple story. It's annoying to me the the flashbacks kind of then presented this air of mystery that wasn't really a mystery. And I don't know if it would have worked better for the film to then just be up in front about the fact that yeah, it's definitely bulbul, even though I don't know what kind of audience member you'd have to be to be like, it might not be though. Who else could it be? Come on, let's go. And so yeah, the flashbacks I found like annoying, they were also weirdly boring. They kind of also promised a lot more in-depth family drama, you know, with that kind of Lady Macbeth vibe of um, Benedini, but it just n did not really then kind of come out in a satisfying way to me. Although the Lady Macbeth vibe is then um, not entirely uh, directly translated because one of the things that the flashbacks confused me on was the fact that she was not the eldest brother, Indranil's wife. Um, she was the wife of Mahendra. Uh, Mahendra who raped and murdered Bulbul. And <sighs> Mahendra is another one of my major problems with this movie. So the thing is, um, he is not mentally well. It's the 1800s for one thing, so we don't get any kind of like diagnosis. I've got no words for you for what kind of mentally unwell he is. But hopefully this is a reference you'll understand, it's okay if not. Um, he reminded me a lot of the first stalker you encounter in the uh, PS2 game Haunted Grounds. He, uh, when he first sees uh, Baby Bulbul, when she arrives at their house, um, he calls her doll. He calls her doll a lot. Um, he says, play, 
um, plays with her hair in this way that he does seem to think that she is like a doll and in a haunting, a horrifying way, um, play is the, is the words he keeps saying before he rapes her. And the element I don't like to it is the way that then, why is he the agent, the, the catalyst of then um, Bulbul's transformation into the Choro and her entire then revenge saga? Um, it just, it feels off to me, the idea that then someone who is not mentally well, um, who isn't all there and is in a way not entirely to blame. Now I know that's controversial, again a lot of aspects of this film are going to hit different for different people, but for me I'm like, that should not have then been the person who would then really like kick this off. Especially when Churro, agent of Kali, like divine justice then is the word of like this revenge saga. And so the idea that then he would be like the first to fall to that, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me. I don't feel like it really then like blends the themes of the film well together. Um, I don't think that it then sends like a great message overall. And it feels, dare I say, lazy. Lazy and offensive, double whammy. The film also seems to have this kind of like, yes all men thing going on until it comes to Sundip. Um, there is then this almost idea that then Satya and Bulbul were then a romantic item um, even without Binadini's meddling and, you know, poisoning Indoranil's mind um, with her with her hints and lies, just because then she would obviously have an upper hand in some way. Um, that also strikes as just petty jealousy. Like, it's also not very, like, girls for girls when then Binadini is then the person, the woman, who is mostly on the same footing as Bulbul. And then that's kind of, like, how she treats her, and we don't get anything deeper going on there. When she has this monologue um, when Bulbul is recovering, uh, when she's first then turning into a chugrul and is looking a lot healthier, she uh, goes off about how she doesn't like her position. She's kind of then, in a way, trying to basically say, well, it is what it is, but in this long extended way where she's basically saying the fact that her husband is insane is not something that she wants, but she gets nice clothes out of it. Her husband is insane and it's not what she wants, but she gets good food out of it. She can have a bath. She is then in that higher position in society. And we don't get any more depth than that from her and it's irritating and it doesn't then, as I say, match this other aspect of Agent of Kali, Kali representing women, as well as then these other aspects. I don't know. I don't know. It's off to me. And Sundip feels like he's only spared because he is then worshipping her by the end. When the forest is lighting up and it's all going down, he says to Satya, like, she's not a demon, she's a goddess. But even then, I don't know, it's it's weird, it's not enough. He then just he feels like a, a vampire for all or something and just, it's a very shallow story for what it is and matched with that bad kind of messaging. And alongside that, that, that messaging that actually feels incredibly bleak, um, whilst the story is being obfuscated by these flashbacks to seem not so shallow. Yeah, yeah, I, gosh. I don't have a great score for this one. This one is two backwards feet and half a cigarillo out of five. Thank you for joining me for the accidentally sped up word vomit of Bulbul today. Um, please join me tomorrow for what will hopefully be a much lighter endeavor with a comedic twist on Frankenstein. With another twist. Find out more. I'll see you soon. Thank you.